Hey guys, welcome back to Mixed Media Salad, a channel created for you by you. I am your host, Ronnie McBride, and today I'm going to go over the new release of the Affinity Photo Beta. It's just been released to the public. I'd had the pleasure of actually being able to uh, touch it a few a few days earlier. Um, and uh, I got to say, the things that I'm seeing, I'm really impressed. There's some great tools in here, and um, I think you guys will find it very useful too. So what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to give you guys a tutorial per se. You know, you'll see new features uh, demonstrated throughout the release uh, until it's actually uh, made its final release on the Apple Store. Uh, but what I'm going to do today is kind of go through some of the uh, demo uh, video that's been produced and kind of give a breakdown of what I'm seeing and, you know, some of those benefits. Some of you guys may look at this and say, you know, there's some cool features in here, but you're not quite sure how they may be implemented. Some of you may be veterans and you get it. Um, and some of you just may be like, oh, you know, this is cool, but I'm not quite sure what's going on. Okay, so it's probably best, for, you know, for, for those uh, types of people. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to move ahead on that. If you want to see the video uh, in its complete entirety, definitely head over to the Affinity site and take a look at it first before continuing on with this video. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each section and kind of break it down. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started here. I love how this is this sets up in the beginning and everything. I love the feel that they, these guys have created, you know, for their brand. Okay, so here in this video, um, this is actually demonstrating selections. I've done a, a tutorial on selections in my class. Uh, if you guys don't know about that, uh, that class. Uh, that class was actually created for Affinity Designer when that came out. You could actually find that in the description. Um, but in this demonstration here, what they're demonstrating is how to mask out one of the hardest things to mask out, and that's getting um, all these wonderful wispy hair elements, okay? So let's just move forward a little bit. Okay, so what it's done is they showed how he isolated an area then he changed uh, the mode into the uh, black and white mode, which anything that is white is actually the uh, elements that are being masked. Anything that is black is in the foreground. All right. So if you're making a selection, everything that you're selecting is the white part. So they're showing how detailed they can get, you know, with their selections, with their refined selection tool. So in this demonstration, which is really, really cool is they are actually showing you how you could remove elements out of an image and um, and have the image refilled with the content surrounding it. So this is very similar to, if some of you have used Photoshop, very similar to content aware. Okay, so you see um, the really interesting detail here is the fact that He's selected all of this elephant out and even the reflection in the water just that quick to remove it, right? And the elephant is removed and then content is actually added to fill in the areas where it was removed. And I mean, that is pretty, that's pretty clean. And if you look over here on the right hand side, that's happening all on, on, you know, one single layer. So it's not like these elephants were composited onto this background and he's removing. This is this is happening in real time right here. So I thought that was pretty cool. So what we got here is a demonstration of their liquefy persona. If you look up here, we still have the uh, same persona setup that we had in Affinity Designer with a few additional personas in photo. Uh, the first one is basically where you would do all your basic edits. And then as you move down the workflow chain, um, if you're a retoucher and let's say you've uh, removed pimples and, you know, blemishes and stuff like off of, of a person's face, then you would move on to, uh, you know, if it was, say, it's a bikini model to do a little nip and tucking of, you know, little fatty overhangs or, you know, a uh, double chin situation or something like that. Um, here we're using it more in a, you know, artistic expression, something very similar to like a uh, Van Gogh painting where, you know, he's actually pulling, um, he's demonstrating the pulling of this 
uh, what do you call it, um, watch and kind of deforming it or whatever, giving it that kind of cool, mysterious Van Gogh look. So I thought that was pretty cool. 16-bit, raw, CMYK, lab color support. Okay, so here, when I saw this in the demonstration, uh, actually in the uh, beta, I was like, wow, this is really cool. Uh, some of you may know what's going on here. If you look on the right hand side, you see high frequency and low frequency. You know what that means? If you're familiar with it, if you're a retoucher, you know how important this is. Because what this is basically doing is um, this is actually doing a, a method that is called uh, frequency separation. And so what frequency separation does is it separates the detail uh, parts of your image away from the color information of your image. So color meaning you know, if you have different tones in the face where, you know, there's blemishes and stuff like that, um, you could actually separately modify those changes and then also without affecting the texture and then also going to the texture layer, which is the high frequency layer and, you know, do your cloning and smooth out, you know, zits and things like that and remove those elements from that layer. And then those two combined make the complete image. Okay. So you used to have to do a few steps to set this up. Now it's just a, a filter. You hit drop. You hit the drop down in the filter area, and it actually does the separation and the setting up the of the high frequency and the low frequency layer. And you should just go right in and start editing. Really powerful stuff here. Okay, so here uh, we got a little demonstration of um, uh, the uh, development mode of Affinity Photo. So if you're uh, bringing a raw file, as you can see, it's dis uh, uh, displaying this raw information up here. Um, what they're doing is they're making some basic adjustments to the exposure and to the brightness, um, the shadows and the highlights. And what happens is as you boost the exposure up in this image, any of the white points in this image actually get blown out. So where it's blown out, you could see right here is highlighted in red, okay? And you don't want to have blown out information because those uh, those pixels, you, you, can't, uh, you can't get it back. You'll lose all that information. So what he's doing here is he's making an adjustment to the exposure and then he goes into the highlights and drops the highlights down to, uh, you know, uh, effect effectively stop the image from being blown out in the widest white parts of that area. Here in this this, uh, this little demonstration here, we have an image of a wedding. It looks like you might have used some of the lighting effects in here. If not, it might be a blend. It might be um, drawn in. But what they're doing is they're showing how they're going through the blending modes to you know produce a different type of look or effect on this particular image. Okay, so here, very powerful. So in Affinity Designer, one of those questions came up was like, uh, hey, we don't have any uh, way of manipulating uh, perspective. I think in their previous demo, they showed like a billboard and then they took another Affinity photo, uh, an Affinity file, uh, Affinity Designer file, and they placed it inside another Affinity Designer file. And what that effectively did was it allowed people to embed files into another. So you could edit one file and have those updates updated in the other file. But the problem with that billboard was it was at an angle and it was perfectly fine for that image. But as you can see here, when we have extreme perspective situation going on here where the vanishing point is somewhere down here on the street. And if you don't know what vanishing point is, we'll definitely have to talk about that later on in another tutorial. But You'll see here that they were able to change the perspective to this really extreme perspective view here and get that image in there. Really cool, really powerful. Now we have perspective tools in here. PSD import, export, shared file format with. Um, so the uh, PSD export and import is very powerful because now we can take our existing uh, PSD files, bring them into Affinity Designer, and 
uh, or Affinity Photo, e uh, either one, but right now we're talking about Photo, uh, we can bring it into Photo and all that PSD changes and layers and all those effects and stuff, actually a lot of it is communicated into Photo. Not all of it, I don't think, but a good majority of it. And the parts that aren't are pretty uh, recreatable in Affinity Photo, <clears throat> excuse me, or Designer. Um, but they're, you know, in, in this particular situation, it's great because now if you are a Affinity Photo or Designer user and you get files that come from somebody using Photoshop, you can now import those. Um, alternatively, you can also export your Affinity Photo file into a PSD for somebody in Photoshop to be able to edit and change. So, um, genius. I mean, I, I don't even know any other way to say it, but that's pretty a genius feature right there. Okay, so here is a demonstration of uh, lighting effects here. You see how uh, we have our lighting panel. I believe it's under the, um, under the filters area here. And uh, we have all these adjustments. You can change the color temperature of the light. You know, um, obviously it's making more of a dramatic scene here in this composite. Um, basically, you know, um, I'm not quite sure. It's a pretty good composite, but it looks like it could have been, uh, this could have been shot separately from the background, or it could have been shot the same day, and the light from the window wasn't as great as we wanted to. So we're using lighting effects to add light where there actually wasn't, and, um, you know, I make some adjustments with that. So you now have lighting effects. <laughs> Okay, so this is great. So uh, in this particular um, uh, persona, we have uh, basically the features to be able to do uh, macros, which macros I think right now feel like um, it's not it's not functioning quite right now in the beta. It will in the final version, but macros you'll be able to record. And if I'm if I'm correct, macros are similar to actions in a way, and so. What that means is you now are able to um, record your own macros and then apply them to images. Now, what you're seeing here is a demonstration of a macro that's already been created that's very similar to um, uh, like Instagram uh, color toning effects here that you could easily just apply to your image and then adjust the opacity of that color toning effect on there. You'll be able to create your own You'll, uh, and you'll be able to import and export those and be able to share them. So really cool, really powerful stuff here. Okay, so here's a little demonstration of motion blur. Um, I know in Affinity Designer, people w wanted to use a, a bit of motion blur because it's more of a, like a directional blur. Um, we didn't have that in Affinity Designer. There's only a, a, a basic blur, which is similar to a Gaussian blur. Here in uh, Photo, there is actually a few different blur filters, uh, motion blur, zoom blurs, uh, you know, of course, the Gaussian blur, and, uh, you know, just a lot of different blur types that you would expect from, you know, uh, uh, an application like this, a pixel-based application. So, um, yeah, and so here you're showing, you know, how much of the blur is affecting, and here, uh, the direction of that blur. Okay, so this is really cool. This goes by really quickly, but uh, just to show you what, what was going on here is that um, he's actually scrubbing through the history, which is, this is already in Affinity Designer. So you, at any point in the Affinity tool sets, you can actually go back from the time that you started or you made a different change or move forward. So um, basically through this whole composite of this image, what they're demonstrating here is scrubbing through and showing that, you know, the clouds are made, then there was a blur that was created, then this tree was added, you know, and all the little details that created this image, which is also the image that's used on the website. Okay, so this is a depth of field effect. Um, which is actually, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that there's a bunch of different modes. Right now, they're showing the tilt shift mode. 
The tilt shift mode actually blurs everything on the outside of the focal area. So what that does is this effect is used a lot, as you can see, to increase the, the feel of like a uh, small model city or something. You know, that's the type of effect the uh, tilt shift, sh uh, shift does. Okay, so moving along. So here we go again with more perspective tools, guys. Um, down here, if you go down to the uh, perspective tool right here, you'll see that there is, um, you know, this tool and you could actually put in different perspective points. And here we're showing a two point perspective. So this vanishing point is disappearing somewhere out this way. This vanishing point is, is uh, out here uh, in another direction. So this is really cool if you're compositing an image on another image and you're trying to get the perspective to match up with the other perspectives of the other buildings or you know other objects in your scene. And it's just the beginning. There's a lot more features coming, guys. And uh, I'm going to try to demonstrate a few of them here as well. And I'm sure you'll see more of these features demonstrated by uh, Affinity as well, too, in the coming weeks. And um, that's pretty much it, guys. So if you have any questions, you definitely want to put those questions down below. And um, I would be happy to answer them. You can actually catch me on the forums. And definitely, if you're looking for training on Affinity Designer, that you can actually find also in the description as well. And... Um, you know, if you have any questions about that, you can also tweet me at Mixed Media Salad. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you soon with another tutorial in Affinity Designer and also some demonstrations in the future of uh, Affinity Photo. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to receive 50% off my training, make sure you sign up at MixedMediaSalad.com.